Welcome back everybody. A couple years ago, I made this video, which talked about using VS Code for Golang development. Things have changed quite a bit since then. We're quickly approaching Go 117, 118, and the VS Code Golang plugin has grown significantly in maturity and is much, much easier to use. So this is a follow-up video to my popular video on VS Code Golang development, how you can get set up really quickly and get started working on your Go projects. So without further ado, let's go. If you want to support the work that I'm doing and you like the content on this channel, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. It really helps out the channel. So here we are with a pretty new installation of VS Code and on my Linux machine here. So this will be as if you were installing it for the very first time. If we bring up a terminal here, you should already have Go installed. If you type Go version in the terminal, you should see some output for the Go version that you have. You should also have your Go env set up, which is all the environment variables that dictate where things are on your system and really is part more of the Go installation process. It's a bit out of scope for this video, but there's lots of ways to do it. There's brew, there's apt, you can just get it in a zip file. But for this video, you're gonna need Go already installed and you should have VS Code also already installed. So let's close this terminal and come over here to the extensions and let's blow this up just a little bit. Now, I don't really have too many extensions installed. So what we can first do here is just type go in the extensions finder. And this first one right here with the like 7 million downloads from the team at Google is the one that we want. Let's give it an install and we're off to the races. I do recommend giving this readme right here a brief overview. It gives you an idea of a bunch of the features, some of the things you can do, configurations, the various tools that come as part of this extension. So yeah, like they like to say, read the documentation. The extension is installed, we can close this, and let's open a Go project. Let's just do Cobra, which is a pretty popular Go project and that starts off for us right away. Now, very importantly down here, we can see Go Please is now enabled by default, and it wants me to update my Go Please version. Now, if you don't know already, Go Please is a language server that provides suggestions and IntelliSense and basically all the things that make a modern IDE work all in a small binary on your local system. This is all part of Microsoft's big push for the language server protocol. And it's really great. It's also what makes things like doing Go in Vim really awesome as well. So for now, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna say always update. It's gonna do a bunch of stuff with this extensions and it's gonna get a bunch of tools for you if you don't already have them installed already. So as long as we accepted that, it's gonna say all tools installed, you are ready to go, great. And let's just come over here open a file. I'm going to close this right now. And we have stuff happening. Let's just come down into some function and we can see some IntelliSense working. Let's do print and we can see a bunch of these things, including format prints from the standard library. So this is IntelliSense working for us and it gives us a bunch of the documentation as well in this block. Before you had to configure a ton of this yourself. So this is all just like out of the box now. This also includes really good IntelliSense for navigating the code. So here I can see this block for where this is defined. I can hit F12 to jump into where that block is defined actually. And I can see this right here and we can go back to go where we just were. This is all stuff that the extension makes possible for you through the Go Please server. Recently, they've added a ton of stuff that has made code generation really simple inside of this extension as well. So here I have this function add template funks, and let's say that I wanted some unit tests for this. So I can right click on this function and go down to go generate unit tests for this function. And it should, boom, just spit out some generated unit tests for me. There's obviously a bunch that I still have to do in here. This would be the actual testing logic but it's some generated code that otherwise is boilerplate that I don't have to write now. The extension also has some new powerful capabilities around diagnostics. So like right here, it's saying, oh, this string should not be capitalized when we're returning an error. That's a linting feature essentially as part of this extension and some of the tools that it is using. Then there's debugging and running, which is probably the biggest benefit you get with using an integrated environment like this versus some terminal environment like Vim. 
So here I've opened up a different Go program that is much more simple, that can give us a better idea of what's happening behind the scenes when we run, debug, set breakpoints, all that. So we can come over here to this little play button, which is run and debug, and then we can hit run and debug. And we should actually see some stuff output, which is the actual run from this program. Obviously the main entry point is the main function and it gives us a bunch of output here, which is what we would have expected. So now let's say we wanted to step-by-step step do some debugging. Well, first you have to set a breakpoint. So come over here, set this little breakpoint right there, and then we can start to run and debug. Run and debug it again, and it will automatically attach and start your debugging session for this program. Wow, nearly no setup. Again, this is leagues beyond what they had before where a lot of this you had to set up and get Delve all set up and all that. This all just comes out of the box now, it's great. Let me show you some of these settings that I'm using currently. This is my JSON settings, which you can get to by doing the command palette and usually I just type JSON. It's this preferences open JSON. And the two main ones is just when I'm editing Go files and go.mod files. And really these are just some personal preference settings around formatting on save versus not save. Nothing that you have to do to get any of the core features working for this Go extension. Behind the scenes, a lot has happened at Microsoft related to this. The Microsoft VS Code Go repository is actually now archived and has been moved recently over to Golang VS Code Go, which is part of the core Golang repository now. I definitely, definitely recommend checking out this repository. All of the information around configurations you can set, brand new features that are coming to the extension, it's, it's all here. And as always with any open source projects that you use, I really recommend that you get involved, talk with the maintainers about what you like, what you don't like, what you wanna see, and maybe even contribute some code. And that's really it. It's super simple now. You just need VS Code, the VS Code Go extension, and Go properly set up on your environment, and then you're ready to get started. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you everybody for 2,000 subscribers. I cannot believe it. Y'alls are the best. And if you like this kind of stuff, then like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. I love seeing this knowledge getting out into the wild. It brings me a lot of joy. So with that, I will catch everybody next time. Peace out.